Hello everyone, sorry for jumping in before the episode, but I just want to tell you all about the Thinking in English Patreon. Patreon is a way for you guys to support Thinking in English and receive some amazing benefits. We have conversation clubs at least six times a week, allowing you to practice your English speaking. We offer weekly discussion sessions with English tutors, including me, where you can ask any questions you have. We have a Discord server and chat rooms, so you can talk and meet other English learners and practice English. I release bonus episodes every Friday, and depending on your subscription level, there are also free English group classes and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me available. There are also some new and exciting new benefits coming in the next few weeks, so join now! I'm currently offering 7 day free trials if you join right now. Click the link in the description or go to www.patreon.com forward slash thinking in English to join now. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. India is now the most populous country. Today, let's discuss how this happened, the numbers behind India's growth, and discuss the challenges and opportunities for India in the future. You can find a full transcript for free over on the Thinking in English blog, the links in the description. Leave a five-star rating for Thinking in English wherever you're listening and consider supporting us on Patreon and joining our conversation clubs to improve your English. Here is today's vocabulary list. Populous Populous A populous country, area or place has a lot of people living in it. For example, India is now the world's most populous country. Demographic Demographic Relating to demography, the study of populations and the different groups that make them up. As in, there have been monumental social and demographic changes in the country. Estimated Estimated Roughly calculated or approximate. For example, the collection has fetched three times its estimated value at auction. Aging Aging Relating to getting older and used to describe a person or thing that is getting old. For example, he restores aging machinery. Fertility rate Fertility rate the average number of children that would be born to a female over their lifetime. For instance, South Korea has the lowest fertility rate in the world. Geopolitics Geopolitics The way a country's size, position, etc. influences its power and its relationships with other countries. For example, these developments are having a major impact on the geopolitics of the region. Talent pool Talent pool The suitable, skilled people who are available to be chosen to do a particular type of job. For example, the company has a large talent pool from which to choose a new leader. Workforce Workforce the group of people who work in a company, industry, country, etc. As in, the majority of factories in the region have a workforce of 50 to 100 people. India is the most populous country in the world. At the end of April, the United Nations reported that India's population was now larger than China's, and will keep growing over the next months and years. How did this happen? How did India become bigger, larger in terms of population than China? Is it a good thing for India, or will it cause more problems than opportunities? Let's take a deeper look at India's growth in today's episode. At the end of April, 
the United Nations released a report announcing that India's population had now reached 1,425,775,850 people. This has matched and then overtaken the population of China. The UN began tracking global population statistics in 1950 and since then China had held the top spot as the most populous nation until last month. India and China are gigantic nations, the only two countries with over a billion people, but they have very different demographic futures. While India will keep growing, China has likely already reached its peak or largest size and will now continue to fall behind India in terms of population. India becoming the largest country is not exactly a surprise. The development has been predicted for decades, but it has happened slightly more quickly than many experts thought. In fact, since 1950, India's population has grown by over 1 billion. And India will keep growing. It is estimated India will reach its maximum size in the year 2064 with 1.7 billion people. And right now, on average, there are 86,000 babies born in India every day, almost twice as many as in China. Interestingly, however, the UN estimations are exactly that, estimations. They are based on a variety of publicly available data sources like death rates and birth rates. But the exact size of the country's population is not currently known because India's census has been delayed. The official reason for delaying India's census, which should have taken place in 2021, is the COVID-19 pandemic. Some people have also accused the government of deliberately not conducting the census, but there is now going to be more pressure to finally start it and discover the true size of the country. In fact, since the last census in 2011, India has grown by more than 200 million people. That is about the population of Brazil. How did this happen? How did India become the most populous country in the world? There are two main factors behind India's rise to becoming the world's most populous country. One, of course, is India's impressive birth rate and young population. But perhaps more significant is China's falling population. Since records began in 1950, China had continuously been the world's most populous country. Yet in 2022, China's population actually shrank for the first time in modern history. In China, there are now 32 million more men than women, and on average, Chinese women only have 1.2 children per person well below the 2.1 children needed for a country's population to grow. China's population will continue to shrink. In the next 20 years, China will likely have up to 10% fewer people, and perhaps by the end of the century will drop below 1 billion. The fall in China's population is a direct result of the Chinese government's policies to control the previously rapidly increasing population. Most famously, a one-child policy was introduced in the 1980s. If couples were found to be breaking the rules, they were punished by fines and in some cases forced abortions. They also encouraged people to marry later in life. And these policies were successful. China's population stabilised and the growth has now stopped. But this has also caused problems in China, a rapidly ageing society which may struggle to support its people in the future. At the same time, India has kept growing. When it comes to population growth, the key statistic is fertility rate, meaning the number of children the average woman has in her lifetime. For a population to stay the same, the average fertility rate must be around 2.1 children per woman or higher, and this should be much higher for a country to grow. 
In the 1960s, India's fertility rate was 6. In the 1990s, it was about 3.5. And today, it is around 2. So while the fertility rate is dropping and slowing down, it is still significantly higher than China's current rate. And as India's population is so young on average, the population will continue to grow even if the fertility rate drops below 2.1. However, the idea that the whole of India is a young and rapidly growing society is not quite accurate. There are 28 states in India, but only 5 have fertility rates over 2.1. Apparently, a third of all population growth in the next decades will come just from the states of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh already has a population of 235 million. In the south of India, things are quite different. People are getting older on average and the workforces are shrinking. So India is not experiencing a population explosion that was once feared. Is becoming the world's most populous country a good thing for India or is it going to cause problems? Well, let's start by looking at some of the opportunities. Overtaking China as the world's most populous country does present numerous opportunities for India. India's young and educated population is an invaluable asset. With a large workforce, India can potentially attract more foreign investments, encourage economic growth and development. Youth brings energy, innovation and adaptability, making India an attractive destination for global businesses seeking a skilled and dynamic workforce. In other words, India's population provides a vast pool of global talent. Another opportunity lies in the potential for increased consumption and market demand. With the largest population, India becomes an attractive market for businesses across all industries. More demand can lead to the growth of new industries, stimulating job creation and economic prosperity. Increased consumption can drive innovation and productivity as businesses try to meet the evolving needs and preferences of a larger society. Having the largest population also has advantages in geopolitics. The nation's population size, combined with its strategic location, strengthen India's position as a regional power in South Asia. India's growing influence will enable it to play a more significant role in shaping regional dynamics and overall security. Moreover, as the largest country, there may now be more of a possibility of a more permanent role in the UN Security Council for India. A permanent seat in the Security Council would enable India to actively participate in crucial decision-making processes, ensuring that its interests are well represented. And as the most populous country, India may have more influence in the future to get this role. The expanding population also offers opportunities for social and cultural development. With a larger population, India may see the emergence of diverse ideas, perspectives and experiences. A larger population can provide a greater talent pool for sport, art and other cultural activities, helping India's participation and success on the global stage. However, on the other hand, having the largest population in the world presents some serious issues or problems. With a growing population, India needs to generate enough employment opportunities. India has a young and educated population with incredible potential. But if there are not enough jobs, especially good jobs, millions of people will not be contributing to the economy in the way they could be. Despite progress in recent years, gender is still an issue in India's labour market. Only 10% of working age Indian women currently work, but with less children on average per woman, India needs to make sure these people can enter the workforce. Internal migration poses another significant challenge. Millions of people within India move around the country, 
from poor regions and the countryside to the richer cities, in search for better opportunities and jobs. This can strain existing infrastructure and public services, leading to issues such as overcrowding, inadequate housing and increased pressure on transportation networks. With a larger population, India may have issues with social welfare programmes and distributing resources, providing access to healthcare, education and social security to a significant number of people requires a robust and inclusive welfare system. Environmental concerns also are an issue with a larger population. Balancing economic growth with environmental conservation is crucial, but as a developing and growing country, India is still reliant on fossil fuels and may struggle with environmental conservation. And finally, social cohesion and addressing socio-economic disparities becomes critical in a larger population. With a diverse and growing population, ensuring social harmony and limiting income inequality is crucial for a sustainable and inclusive society. So here is today's final thought. India is now the most populous country in the world. Hopefully after listening to this episode, you now understand a little better how India overtook China in terms of population. This growth presents both opportunities and challenges for India. On the one hand, being the most populous country gives India a young and educated population, bigger economic possibilities and geopolitical influence. On the other hand, managing a large population can be expensive and complicated. But what do you think? Is India becoming the world's most populous country a good thing for India? Or is it a bad thing? Let us know by leaving your opinions and your comments on this episode in the comments of the blog. Leave a comment on Spotify or leave, send me a message on Instagram. Um, love hearing all of your ideas every week. So many interesting opinions out there. And you can practice writing by leaving a comment on Spotify or the blog. It's a great way to, to practice, your, practice your English, practice writing about what you've just listened to. Um, if you love listening to Thinking in English, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Patreon is a subscription platform where you can support your favourite podcasts. And by joining my Patreon, you can join my conversation groups every week. You can also get access to English classes and bonus episodes, lots of cool things. Also, leave a rating for Thinking in English wherever you're listening. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, follow me on Instagram. New vocabulary posts for this episode should be out within the next few hours or whenever you're listening to this. Maybe it's already out. So go to Instagram and check the vocabulary of this episode on Instagram. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for supporting Thinking in English and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.